Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It strikes me that there are three overarching questions. Number one, can government force citizens to accept certain religious beliefs? Number two, can government prevent citizens from holding certain religious beliefs? And thirdly, Mr. Chairman, can government decide which religious beliefs are acceptable and which are not? And I find it instructive that in what is supposed to be a legal hearing on the free exercise of religion, the Democrats offer a health care professional as their witness. And then I thought some more about it, and I thought, Mr. Chairman, well, of course they did, because Supreme Court law is not on their side. When a state decided to tell a church, you have to pledge allegiance to the flag, the church objected, and the Supreme Court said, you're right, you don't have to. And when a state decided to tell a religious organization, you must display a license tag that has a certain phrase on it, the church objected, and the Supreme Court said, you're right, you don't have to. And when the state exercised what's a pretty compelling interest in having an educated citizenry and said you must send your students to school to a certain age, a religious organization objected, and the Supreme Court said you're right, you don't have to. And whether it's animal sacrifice or whether it's working on Saturdays or whether, heaven forbid, it is deciding who your ministers are, and the Supreme Court ruled nine to nothing, Mr. Chairman. Can you find me another case in this fragmented state of jurisprudence that we're in, a nine to nothing case, that this administration overstepped its bounds because it tried to tell a church who it can hire, fire, and retain as a minister? This is a legal issue. <laughs> And the administration will prevail if it can prove two things. Number one, that there's a compelling state interest in providing free contraceptive care to the, to the contrary of people's religious beliefs. And you sit there and think, well, it is important, just like uh, fighting obesity and stopping smoking and all the other things that I couldn't get Dr. Rosenstock to answer for me, it's important is it compelling? Well, how can it be compelling when you grandfather out so many entities and when you have so many exceptions? But just give them that, Mr. Chairman. Give them the compelling interest part for sake of argument. Is it the least restrictive means? Mr. Chairman, if our colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to create within the penumbra of the Fourth Amendment a constitutional right to free contraception, let them pass a bill. But do not let, make that man do it when it violates his religious beliefs. So I would ask this uh, to uh, the two uh, legal experts, because I'm not. But you don't have to be one to look at Supreme Court law and see if you can protect a group's right to practice animal sacrifice in Florida, but you can't stand up for the Catholic Church's beliefs on when life begins? So I would ask my two legal experts this. Does it meet the compelling interest test? And is there a least restrictive means of accomplishing this goal, even assuming arguendo that it does? Ms. Monahan. Just to clarify, I, I'm not a legal expert, so I defer to our legal expert over here. All right. Ms. Uden. Um, to answer your question in a nutshell, I mean, it's, it's completely unconstitutional, and it does not satisfy the compelling government interests or the least intrusive means test. And tell us in the uh, 45 seconds I have remaining why it doesn't meet the compelling interest test. Well, I mean, you have to understand what's been what's constituted compelling government interest in the past. It's something like national security or preventing crimes. I mean, if you really think about that standard, it's something that's used in the, in the context of the Equal Protection Clause when we determine when racial discrimination is allowed and when it's not. And when that standard is met, racial discrimination is in fact allowed. So if you think about it that, that way, you understand just how extreme uh, or how strict that standard is. Um, and absolutely, we can say that in he here, in this situation, the, the state of government interest is in the increase in the access to contraception. And when implied to religious organizations, that's only a marginal increase in the access to contraception, which absolutely, we can all agree, does not rise to the level of a compelling government interest. Well, I'm out of time, so I won't have a chance to ask you if the president can make people stop smoking, because that's in the overall health benefit of all of us, or whether they can make diabetics diet so all of our costs go down. I'll have to save that for another.